I'm really underwhelmed with the Lego Piranha plant set. Not because it's bad, there's actually lots of good stuff about it, but because it didn't meet my expectations for it. So before diving into that too much, here's the model. It turned out to be considerably bigger than I thought it would, especially when you place it next to last year's Lego Mighty Bowser set, and while the previous two 18 plus Lego Super Mario releases were some sort of standalone projects, the Mighty Bowser and the Piranha Plant together kind of feel like they're setting the scale for upcoming upscaled Super Mario World objects and characters, which is kinda cool. The Piranha Plant itself looks great, all things considered, especially thinking about how the roundness of the big, bulbous head and juicy lips, not my words by the way, but the direct quote of the instruction booklet, were achieved with great use of relatively new LEGO pieces. The quarter dome red elements have two distinct printed versions for a more visually interesting white dot pattern, while every other detail is achieved with just the use of brick built techniques, like the opening mouth function or the way the teeth were attached to the old build. The head is quite heavy and so the ball joint used to attach it to the stalk isn't enough to hold its body weight. That ball joint can be used to pose the head, though its range of movement, due once again to its weight, feels limited. The stalk can be tilted front and back, given how this is connected to the pipe, but I found it extremely odd the fact that we can just take the plant out, as this is just resting in place and not locked in any way. The leaves of the piranha plant can also be somewhat posed, and the pipe well, is very straightforward as far as the object goes, though it's a very decent part spec with all of the bright green elements used to make it, with special highlights going for the plethora of curved slopes. Is that the end of the model? Not really. Disguised in a very subtle way, we can press the back of the green pipe to open a compartment underneath, making the printed 3x3 Super Mario coins fall off. Kinda wish there were more of them for a bigger effect, and I can see tons of these being put to great use for custom Super Mario Lego builds. Placing them back on the money box, so to speak, is quite easy, as you only need to close the lid that stays in place and drop the coins in the tiny slots between the plant and the pipe. And that about sums up what the model is all about. 540 pieces for $60 isn't the greatest of values, but the set is priced at a somewhat cheap price threshold, while delivering a great looking and iconic display Super Mario item that, judging from comments online, people are really looking forward to get. Now this, on a personal level, is so much not what I hoped for this product. The LEGO Super Mario theme only does one 18 plus set a year, and all of the previous three have completely nailed it in so many levels, making them one of my favorite releases year after year. The NES with those crazy play features on the TV that played the game and allowed placing and removing the Super Mario Bros. LEGO cartridge out of the LEGO console was astounding. The following year, Mystery Cube was out with all of the amazing opening functions and even secrets to be overshadowed just a year later by the puppet-like Mighty Bowser that we can play around with, turning his head side to side, opening its mouth or even shooting a fireball. Naturally, I was hoping for something far bigger, more complex, with lots of an expected concepts, functions and play features that every other 18 plus LEGO Super Mario set up until this point delivered year after year, except for the Piranha Plant. I really like it, don't get me wrong, it's a great product with better display value and price threshold than 95% of the LEGO portfolio, I was honestly just hoping for something more.